So hopefully you can see the presentation now. Yes, sorry. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. So hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. It depends where you are. Uh, thanks so much, first of all, Fruiten, for asking me to give a presentation today. <clears throat> I came across uh, three years ago with a company um, for the microfluidics, and we had amazing discussions about how we can use uh, for nanomedicine, because I am on the drug delivery field mainly. And since then, we have worked very close. And today, I will show you some of the results we uh, have obtained for the last three years. So my name is Dimitris Lampreu. I, I based at the School of Pharmacy at Queen's University, uh, Belfast. If you're not familiar, we are in Northern Ireland. It's just one hour flight from London or a couple of hours driving from Dublin. It's an amazing, uh, we have amazing views. It's a very nice place. If you haven't been, please uh, visit. So we, in the introduction, it was mentioned about emerging technologies. The emerging technologies transforming the pharma world. And one of the emerging technologies transforming, it is microfluidics, especially for the last years. The last three to four years, I have to say that microfluidics is getting more and more inside the manufacturing of nanomedicines. In green, you will see the ones we focus on here in the lab, you know, microfluidics, personalized medication, nanotechnology. Now those three are coming together because with the microfluidics, we are manufacturing nanoparticles for personalizing, especially for cancer applications. And we have also a project together with uh, Fluigen on that. In my lab, we're focusing, we're dividing three uh, areas. One is in electrospinning uh, for the manufacture of different nanofibers, but I'm not gonna stay on that. The next one is the 3D printing area. Now we're using the 3D printing for the manufacture of different drug delivery systems, but we're using also the 3D printing for customized uh, chips. So we're preparing our own chips here, which we can compare it with other companies, uh, for example, and see the benefit of those microfluidic chips. Organ on a chip, lab on a chip also, we do this with the 3D printing. But we are here to talk about microfluidics. So by the third uh, part of the one third of the of my lab is focusing microfluidic lab on a chip. So we do the manufacturing of polymer, PLGA or lipid base like liposomes, niosomes, nanomedicines using microfluidics. But at the same time, we compare those with traditional formulation methods. And we try to convince others why they have to use it. Why is better than extrusion or hydration method that the pharmaceutical companies that are using it at the moment? Why to move in, in microfluidics manufacturing? What will be the benefit for them and the benefit also to the patient? Because we have to look about the patient at the end of the day. And as I mentioned, we manufacture those microfluidic chips ourselves, also some of those. I'm sure we all know what microfluidics is. We have precise control. But the microfluidic market, as been mentioned, has been increased a lot, especially the last few years. And the prediction is it will continue increasing for the next years as new developments coming in, especially for in vitro diagnostics and drug delivery applications that we're using. Now, for the drug delivery, you can use the microfluidics either for the production of nanomedicines, or you can use it as in a combination with MEMS devices to deliver drugs, to control the, how much drug you would like through uh, different microfluidic systems. And those are the two things that also we're covering inside the drug delivery ourselves. A few years ago in 2019, like a year and a half ago, we came together experts in nanomedicine and we talk about what is the issue of transparency and reproducibility in nanomedicine? We came together and we prepared a nature nanotechnology um, manuscript. Inside of that manuscript, we're discussing about the sizing of the particles, the targeting, but also the manufacturing of those. And of course, microfluidics is one of the main things that now we can change. We can move for, forward to change the formulation. For drug delivery, if you're not familiar, the microfluidics, it's more tenable futures. We can control the diameter, the structure, the surface can be easily 
tuned, we can change the surface charge, we can change also the modification, like we have more targeted for cancer applications with proteins or peptides on the surface. Has a good robustness, like low batch to batch variation, especially in comparison with traditional methods we have in issues on between batches. Good versatility. You can prepare micro nanoparticles. I will show you examples also for hydrophobic hydrophilic molecules. The issue with most of the manufacturing methods is the hydrophobic molecules, hydrophobic molecules like cancer drugs. But with the microfluidics, you can formulate that. And of course, to have a control release, you can have a precise control of your payload release profiles. There are different microfluidic, uh, if you call it mixers that you can use. And we manufacture in different chips to understand what's happening in our nanoparticles, in the liposomes, in the solid lipid nanoparticles, in the niosomes. And we're using this to understand better. And of course, it depends of the drugs you're using, your inputs will be different. So either you're mixing your drugs together with the lipids or together with aqua solution. So this is a whole lecture, so I will skip that, but happy to have more discussions with anyone uh, offline. We have six platforms in our lab. We have three from Vruigen, one we prepared ourselves and two from other manufacturers. We'll, we like to use to compare systems. We want to be working with the best and also every system will have plus and minus. I think you can understand why we have three Vruigen systems, not that they're not good because they're so good. So we will need more to use them all together. So we're looking forward for more on that. Now let's talk about a few results in nanomedicine. So we're all familiar with COVID-19 and with the Pfizer vaccine. I also have a va Pfizer vaccine. And the Pfizer vaccine is with lipid nanoparticles with, uh, provided with the sRNA. So you can easily manufacture those sRNA, RNA, mRNA particles using microfluidic chips. And we have with sRNA ourselves here also. We have manufactured sRNA nanoparticles using different microfluidic chips. And that's now the future. We're looking at how we can manufacture more vaccines and continuous manufacturing of those, scale up of those using microfluidic chips that will be cheaper, quicker for pandemics, for future pandemics, but also for the current one now, if we can provide more vaccines out there than the current manufacturing problems we have in, for the production of lipid uh, nanoparticles with the mRNA. So uh, this is example here, so I will show you different cases. So this is the first example. You can see the same formulation with two different manufacturing methods. One is the hydration method, which has been used in industries, and the other one is the microfluidic. Hopefully you can understand which one is which. With the microfluidic method, as I mentioned in the beginning, we can have more a better particle sizing, narrow distribution, also your polydispersity index, like you don't have polydispersed particles, you have more monodispersed. It depends also with your flow rates and flow ratios you're using. You can control the size. In the nanomedicine, it depends on the application. If you're looking for oral, oral administration or IV administration or for brain, you need to have different sizes. For brain, for example, you need around 100 nanometers in order to pass your brain barriers. So with the microfluidics, you can have exactly the same liposome safe, but by changing the flow rate, flow ratio, you can control the size by having exactly what you need for your application on that. Now, by controlling also the flow rate, flow ratios, you can control your release. The same drug, by changing the flow rates, it can give you completely different release profile, either faster or control or burst release. For example, be very fast or control the release over time or target the release also. And all of this, you can do it by just play slightly with the flow rate. We're building a database here by using different flow rates, different lipids and different drugs. And that for us to understand if a company will come and say, I would like to use a drug with PKX, we will know from what parameters to start instead of starting from zero. Now, another case, we, uh, we use it nanoparticles for biomedical imaging. Now, 
Here it's completely different. You don't want a release. You want a very high concentration of your contrast media because your contrast media is toxic to the body. And you want very high concentration. You don't want any release and you want to circulate in the body and then eliminate it. We were the first pr producing those, uh, report those, to correct, to report those in the literature, doing this with one of the microfluidics also devices. And we did that by using liposomes, but also by using PLG nanoparticles. Now in the PLG nanoparticles, we put two drugs together. So we provide, a, we put a drug and a contrast media. In case of the contrast media will leak from that, we want a drug to prevent any issues in your body. And we might also have two molecules at the same time with our PLGA uh, nanoparticles also. And PLGA is approved by FDA, so it's an approved formulation to be used down the line for clinical studies. We also did some toxicity cells. We took the cells, so this is a cell, and we took the cell, we put our liposomes. Now, I will, um, we change in the focus, of course, okay? So you have in the cell line here, then we change the focus because we want to see the particles. And you can see here the particles. So we can see the cell liposome interaction and what's happening when you're using microfluidics, when you're using other methods also at the same time. And what's happening when we don't use any formulation, just the drugs direct also, we can see the cell interaction on that. Another case is uh, we're using it for nanoparts for new, new generative diseases. So by having the microfluidics, we are able very, very quick to change the, the flow rates and flow ratios in order to having a very good formulation that will have a very high dosage of the drug we need, small size, but control, because you don't want to have too much drug in your brain direct, but you want over time to kill any tumors there. And we have managed to do on this. And we have managed to do something similar also for lung cancer applications. For lung cancer, it's much different because for the lungs, you need microparticles that they can break down in nanoparticles. So this is, this is something very sophisticated we try to do. We have a par particle with nanoparticles come together as a microparticle. And as soon as you come in your inside your lungs after the inhalers, for example, they will break on that. We're working more on this, so hopefully next time we'll have more results on that. We also working with biologics a lot, and we're working with Municor, which is the cancer uh, biologics uh, company in Oxford here in UK. And we're working to uh, deliver biologics, not only drug molecules, with using microfluidics. And we do that, uh, this is an example of the BSA uh, protein, but we do with more unique cancer target, which I cannot show you today because of the company uh, confidentiality. We have also studies with sRNA, also mRNA using uh, liposomes, solilipid nanoparticles and isomes, and by using uh, different uh, microfluidic uh, flow rates and flow ratios for that. We also have a European grant, it just came to an end, and this was the protein crystallization by using microfluidics. We produce in those by 3D printing applications, then we use in the microfluidic systems, for example, from Fruigen, for production of those crystals. And you can see that we can produce that, those nice nanocrystals on that. I think I'm almost at the end of my timing for that, so we'll close with a 3D printing. As I mentioned, we're producing, we're not using only commercial ones, we're using, of course, from so now we have the new Fluigen chip that we are start using it and comparing it with the other uh, chips we're using. That will be very interesting data. We're looking forward for that. So we prepare those microfluidic chips. Now, this chip for you, it looks as one. Those two data is from the same chip, but what's the difference is in the first one here, those lines here that are straight inside. Second here, you're having like a vascular here, like a tube. By changing that interaction of the particles, you're changing the particle sizing. So the tubes inside here, either, either straight as a square or circle, because the interaction between the lipid and your drugs is completely different. You're producing different sizes. 
The good thing here is, doesn't matter what flow rate you're using, your size stays the same. So by manufacturing different chip, we manage to increase the flow rate, but keep exactly the same, the size. So what we want, to, why we want this, because we want to scale up that for mass productions quicker, but at the same time, we're not changing any of the particle, of the particle uh, properties, particle size, part, drug delivery, drug release also of that particle. And we are almost there about this, but it's good to prepare those printing chips for ourselves because we can modify it and we can print one and in one hour we have a new system to use it. This is one of the chips also in my, in my hands here. And you can see on that for, we can use it with different materials. It's a transparent, we can see also the chips on this, uh, what we're using for different shapes. So just to conclude on that, so hopefully uh, it's clear message microfluid is a rapid one-step method for the production of small and homogeneous particles, not only lipid, but also PLGA nanoparticles. We can adjust uh, and manipulate uh, different lipids uh, by different parameters, by changing the flow rates and flow ratios on that. And also microfluidic simplifies the capsulation step without losing capsulation efficacy and make it much faster than traditional manufacturing methods. I would like to thank, first of all, our sponsors, and of course, my team, postdocs, PhD students, and research visitors, and Fluigent, not only for the time today, but also for all the collaboration and the amazing support we, get, we got from day one of coming uh, with the interacting with you guys there. Thank you so much for everything, and thanks for your attention, everyone.